children are a gift from the Lord. Playgrounds like this are built so that those children growing up can have a lot of fun and enjoyment and, and it does help the parents take care of their kids for certain parts of their lives too. Babies are here and young children and uh, it just works well to have a good place for them to play. Sometimes bad things happen though and when abuse occurs it is tragic. Babies sometimes have been picked up and thrown against opposite walls and broken bones and they don't get them taken to the hospital to be reset. They, they, they are permanently injured because of that abuse. At that time, the baby has had absolutely nothing to do with the abuse. He or she is totally a victim. If a person grows up in that atmosphere, they may believe that as they're older, they still have no choice. They still are 100% victim. The classic situation about a person growing up that may feel that way is a woman who grows up in an alcoholic home. Her dad is horrible. He is an alcoholic. He mistreats her. She is looking for a way to get out. And she does. She finds somebody she can marry. But he turns out to be an alcoholic too. So her dreams turn to nightmares real fast. She divorces him and finds somebody else to marry. And the same thing happens again. She decides, I am never going to look at anybody who touches alcohol again. I have got to get out of this. And so she divorces that person, looks for somebody, finds a man who won't touch alcohol and marries him. But it's the same behavior. He's a dry alcoholic. Why does this keep happening to her? It, it is something that she has nothing to do with, right? Wrong. She has a sign on her back that declares to everyone how to treat her. And the people who are looking for this sign know how to pick it up. Abuse me. And they do. I recall having a ministry boss at one point in time that I felt did not treat me the appropriate way. I came to believe that he had betrayed me. He told me he wanted me to change certain things. He gave me a certain time frame to do it. And I was diligently working on that from my perspective. And he came back before the time frame was up. And I'm going to tell you that story because it's a long journey. It took me a long time for me to realize that what I saw as his sin against me, I, in my reaction, turned out to be sinning as well. That long journey is something I'm going to share with you. My boss told me that I had a certain amount of time to work on improving and then came back before that time was more than half done. I believed that he had lied to me and it caused me to jump on this teeter-totter that so many people seem to live on. The teeter-totter between blame and guilt. When this teeter-totter is level or pretty close to level, it means things are going fine with my life. I'm, I'm okay at work. I'm okay at my home. I'm feeling pretty good about me. Things are all doing fine. But when this teeter-totter gets one end down because there's too much blame or too much guilt, either one, it means something negative is happening in my life and bad things are happening. So when I believed that my boss had lied to me, then I began blaming him for something negative in my life. And immediately, something changed in my heart. I began to feel negative towards him. I resented him. And I began then to feel guilty because I'm not supposed to have that 
resentment in my heart towards my boss. And, and he <coughs> acted then, I think, a harsh way to me. He changed my job to something that he, I'm sure, knew did not fit my personality. And so I was just crunching numbers in a small room for a couple of years. And I got to thinking, that boss knows better than that. He knows about personalities. He's to blame for my difficulty in this job. And what that led to was me being aware that I was getting bitter. I did not believe that my boss was doing things for my good. So there I was being bitter and I was guilty again. And then my boss, I realized, was hurting other people as well and that he was using his power in ways that would uh, hurt them. And I thought this injustice needs to stop. And I blamed my boss for doing things that were harmful to other people. And then a man came about six months after I had been changed to this other job and spoke to us and said, I want you to think about a person and keep thinking about that person for a while. Well, I thought of my boss. And he said, now I want you to pray that God will bless that person. I couldn't do it. And God showed me that I had allowed hatred to come into my heart. And that that hatred was beginning to eat me away because of the bitterness that I had let grow. And I knew that I needed to repent of that sin. Because the scripture is very clear that if I hate someone, and I think one place it says without cause, um, that I am already committing murder in my heart. And I didn't want to be committing murder. And so I repented. In addition to that, I knew I needed to do something more because just my choice to say, God, forgive me for that hatred, it didn't stay gone. I still had those same feelings. So I knew I needed to receive God's grace to change my heart. And separate from that, I was still blaming my boss. As you know, I was going back and forth a lot. And as I prayed to forgive my boss, what the man then shared with me helped me realize what I needed to do. And that was I needed to bless him. I began doing things that would be a blessing to him and his family. And um, I knew that I could learn to have my feelings catch up to my choice to forgive. I was at the same meeting with Alger and I thought of the same man and I had the same response in my heart and that was hatred. And I knew that that was wrong, that I was guilty before God. And so I repented of the hatred and got rid of it and received God's forgiveness. So that part was gone. So I knew that the next thing I needed to deal with was forgiving my boss and blessing him. And I thought, well, I can choose to forgive him. In fact, that's what I had been doing for quite some time, is that I was choosing and choosing and it just didn't get any better. But blessing him was something I did not know how to do. I could not make myself say the words bless him and mean it. If I had said bless him, what I really wanted God to bless him with was boils or something like that. And so not much of a blessing. Not much of a blessing. I knew that was not what uh, Jesus was saying to do. So I told the Lord, I will pray for him in another language every time I think of him and I'll bless him in that language because I can't make myself say it in English. And so over the next few days, actually about a couple weeks as I remember, I would pray for him. And of course he came to my mind over and over and over every day. So I had a lot of opportunity to bless him and bless him and bless him in another language until finally I could do it in English. The amazing thing to me that I had not comprehended when Jesus said to forgive and bless is what it would do for me. And I really was able to get free myself and let go of the hatred, let go of the any resentment that I had through blessing that man. And I found freedom. It was awesome. 
the whole aspect of my feelings catching up to my choice took a lot longer. It didn't seem like I was making much progress in that, so I asked my friend uh, who worked with me and, and, and uh, we were in a home fellowship together, we, we were good friends, I asked if he would be willing to help me by being an accountability partner with me. And uh, he said yes, he'd be happy to help me. I wanted to do more, however, than just not hate my boss. I wanted to bring every thought captive to Jesus Christ, to have my thoughts be what he wanted me to think. So I asked my friend to um, just periodically, different amounts of times, different days, uh, say, what was your last thought? And when he did, I promised that I would be truthful. I learned that a lot of my thoughts were very selfish. I would be thinking about what I had said in a previous conversation and thinking, if I had just said this, then they would have gotten what I meant. Things that would make me look better to other people. And I realized that too was not what God wanted for me. That was not bringing every thought captive. And as he did that, and as I memorized and meditated on God's word on areas about my thought life, God slowly began bringing my mind and then my heart back to where he wanted it. And it did come to the point where the teeter-totter was no longer sitting there, not even balanced, because a teeter-totter is truly meant to go back and forth. And what God wanted me to do was to get rid of the teeter-totter in my life. He wanted this whole thing to just be gone and for me to be free from guilt and from blame, that I could live with freedom and I would never again have to struggle with the inward sins that come from responding, reacting rather, to the sins of others against me. I can keep them forgiven and I don't have to pick up guilt. I can live with freedom, praise God. I want you to watch this skit that we're going to have and to be aware of your feelings as the skit takes place. Your on-site facilitator is going to be asking you what your feelings were with the actions and with the words that are there. And I want you to be deeply aware. What is it that you are feeling? <laughs> 